having a good time tonight? <laughs> Mr. Brad? Yes. Lover of women? Yes. Who are the next four players? <gasps> She's a half-elf fire mage with a plus two middle finger. From halfway down the menu at Voodoo Donuts, it's your hometown heroine, Nutshell Goddamn Gulag! <laughs> Raised amongst the gentry of Truck Nuts, Missouri, he's now recently been promoted to the head for Loco Sommelier at his local Long John Silvers. Your friend on the internet, Adam Bozak. No. Whoa, shit. A part-time jorts model and aspiring podcast listener, he comes to us all the way from Two Girls One Cup MP4 Arkansas. The only real dad on Twitter, K Thor Jensen. Come on down. It's a secret. It's a human head. That's what's in there. A professional trainer and breeder of juggalos, she hails from New Jersey. Shell game! Come on down! <laughs> New Jersey is the funniest thing. Nutshell Gulag! <laughs> Nutshell, are you ready to push that button? Absolutely not. Okay, Nutshell, push that button! <laughs> Nutshell Gulag, I need you to tell us all how to get rid of demons. Okie dokie, um, how to get rid of demons. If you believe that you have demons, you may be feeling scared and helpless, but you can take your power back. Many religions and spiritual people who believe in demons believe that they get their powers from negative energy. So you can fight back by controlling your negative energy, thoughts, and emotions. If you believe that your home has demons, you can expel them by using a few rituals that are meant to drive them away. Once you've gotten rid of your demons, there are strategies you can use that are supposed to keep them from coming back. <laughs> Method one, controlling your energy. Hmm. Identify your negative thoughts to keep demons from gathering. Many people believe that the demons feed off of negative energy, which means that you can get rid of demons by learning how to control your energy. That starts with recognizing and controlling your negative thoughts. If you're able to recognize them, then you can counteract them. For example, if you look in a mirror and find, <laughs> find yourself thinking that you're ugly or failure, <laughs> Take a moment to reflect and realize that these are negative thoughts. Demon thoughts. De Truly, it is the mirror that Satan is ugly. Satan thoughts. <laughs> for, okay, I did that, for example. Um, even if negative thoughts happen automatically, you can learn to recognize them so you can stop them. Over time, you'll get better at catching and preventing negative thoughts from happening. And then think positively. <laughs> To drive demons away. That's okay, yeah, okay. I'm gonna skip over to the positive thoughts. <laughs> the F plus, skip over positive thoughts. Method three, expelling demons. One, burn white sage to clear out demons. Don't do that, that's cultural appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
say a prayer to get rid of the demons. Whatever your religion, praying out loud and calling for help to remove the demons can help you get rid of them. Say the prayer over and over as you move about the space so the demons are driven out. <laughs> Psalm 23 is a popular verse to recite to radiate positive energy and drive the demons away. Chant your own prayer or mantra that repeats a positive intention while also banishing any demons. For example, you could say something like, no demons are welcome in this space. I command you to leave. This is a place of light and love. Oh. <laughs> Nutshell, does this work on Slender Man? <laughs> Three, bang pots and pans to scare away any demons in your home. This also works for bears and raccoons. <laughs> Nature's demons. <laughs> Sprinkle holy water around your home. <laughs> Many people believe that holy water will drive away demons. Call your local church and ask them if you can have a bottle of holy water. <laughs> Sprinkle some of the water all over your home, making sure you get the corners and the windows. And the walls! <laughs> if you don't... If, if you can't get holy water, say a prayer or repeat a monstra, monstra, a mantra over a bottle of water to bless it. <laughs> Five, call a professional to help you get rid of the demons. But an important note, look online for professionals near you, but be wary of scams. Don't give them any money until you're satisfied they got rid of your demons. What about half now, half with the demons out? Method three, keeping demons away. Avoid negative films or music in your home. If demons feed off of negative energies, then horror movies, pornography, aggressive music, graphic art. What was that about pornography? I wasn't listening until I heard pornography. Aggressive music, or no, um... Horror movies. Um, right. Other forms of violent or negative expression can attract and feed them. Keep your space free of negative energies. Always play happy music. Displaying art that moves you in a positive way. Ooh. Number two. Charge cleansing crystals under a full moon. <laughs> Many people use crystals as a means of clearing away negative energy. Crystals placed in the light of a full moon are said to absorb the energy and recharge. They can then be placed around the house to ward off negative energy, which can get, help get rid of demons. Place the crystals on a windowsill or outside under a full moon, and the best crystals for cleansing negative energy are kyanite, selenite, obsidian, hematite, and desert rose. Duh. Illy, Illy. Number three, sprinkle salt in the corners of your house and doorways. Sprinkle salt everywhere. It's delicious. Okay. <laughs> uh, wear an item or talisman that is important to you to protect yourself. Crosses, necklaces, and other religious items can hold power and keep demons away if they're important to you. Okay. Um... <laughs> The item doesn't have to be religious. For example, if a friend made a bracelet for you to protect you, that can work to get rid of demons too. Okay. What if pornography is your talisman? <laughs> oh no. Uh, community Q&A. Question. The good shit. <laughs> Question. My son is very troubled and physically ill. He is pale. <laughs> He is pale and sometimes vomits blood. Yeah, he masturbates too much. Could he be possessed by a demon? <laughs> yeah. Community answer. Take him to a medical doctor for an exam immediately. <laughs> that can be physically wrong with him that are not demonic possession. There are parasites that can enter and live in the stomach and other internal organs that could cause these symptoms. Yes? I don't know. Q 
Can they hurt me? Why is it I'm having trouble breathing? Demons. If you're having trouble breathing, go to the doctor! The doctor in the USA? You may also be having anxiety, panic attacks, because you're so worried about demons, so try to calm down. Which doctor, more like? Six, five, four, two, five. Yay! Nashel Gulag! I'm, I'm suddenly, suddenly emboldened by the wisdom of the WikiHow community editors. Thank you so much. Just a bot that autofills go to the doctor. Next up, we've got Adam Bozarth. I will win this game. Before he begins, there's a couple things that I want to say, which is that uh, Adam Bozarth is somebody that I, can, I consider uh, a friend, uh, somebody that I think is very funny, and also somebody that compiled all of the content for this drive show. <laughs> That's right. Adam Bozarth compiled all of the content for this completely randomly selected live show. I pitched it as random in the first place, so I even wouldn't know what I'd be reading. That's right. So, Adam, what I want you to do is, when you hit that button, what yeah. it's going to do is, what you, when you hit yeah. that button, yeah. it's going to give you completely randomly selected material. I really hope that I get this one. You might. You very well might. Let's find out what happens when you push that button. Mm. Again... Oh! oh, what'll it be? What'll, which one will it be? Which one? It might be, I don't know which one it'll be. It might be, it might be that one. It might go over to that one. I don't know. We still don't know. It's still spinning. I don't know what it's going to land on. It might land on anything. We don't know. It is still spinning. We don't know. Oh, it's going to be that one. <laughs> Thanks, Montreth. Adam Bozarth, please teach this crowd how to turn the Super Bowl into super sex. I've heard nothing but compliments from my female friends this year about coming this coming Super Bowl. It's blah, blah, Super Bowl. And blah, blah, the Patriots. Blah, blah, the Giants. Blah, blah, the Giants, Patriots. Or whatever. Uh, all my friends are trying to figure out ways of getting out of watching the damn game. So this goes to all of those football widows because you're on those chickle chickies who loves football and paints her face the colors of her football team. You are that person. Uh, well then, la dee frickin' da to you, little Miss Perfect Woman! I bet you also have a flat head! And turn into pizza at midnight, too! This article isn't for you! Little Miss Perfect Football Wife. But for the rest of us who may have little, or let's be honest, no interest in the game, Super Bowl Sunday can be the biggest bore or a total disconnect from the creature we call boyfriend. 
slash husband slash Mr. Right Now. So what do you do? Well, you have options as always. You can take the easy way out, go shopping with friends, whine about how he doesn't understand, and do some retail therapy. Women be shopping. Women be shopping. Hey, when doesn't that work, right? But with, what's the paycheck? You miss out on an opportunity to get closer to each other. You're still rolling your eyes at him and his stupid pastime while he's wondering, who's going to pay off your credit card bill? Uh? (laughs) Hi, this is Adam Bozart speaking. I don't know who this article's for. Or you can play submissive little wifey wifey poo hiding out in the kitchen, only to embark occasionally to refill chips, salsa, and beers for your man and his crew of screaming college buddies. Ooh, when do I sign up for that? (laughs) That day of thrills, the payback, he's happy you helped out. (laughs) But you're stuck doing the dishes and frankly, feeling a little left out and underappreciated, it doesn't really make the best mood to go up and jump in the little sack with him, does it? No. Who wants to fuck a football man? Okay, ready for plan C? As in creating? As in creating an all-consuming combustible coil... What? Sorry. Okay, ready for plan C? As in creating all-consuming combustible coitus? So like... So... I like alliteration. Deal with it. And listen up. Imagine instead you both having a great time, getting into the game because it holds the promise that you will both have a great time before, during, and after the game. Oh, your little cute ears perked up, did they? Yeah, I thought so. I'm going to skip ahead to um, something. Oh, my God, there's no questions. Why would there be? I don't know. I don't know. There's no, que- there's no question. Nobody has any questions about how to turn the Super Bowl into super sex. I'm following. I, I have a lot of questions. Yeah, I'm full of questions. Every, no, everybody at once. No, ev- no I, I mean, everybody in the audience right now, I want you to tell me how to turn the Super Bowl into super sex. Three, two, one, go. I'm going to skip ahead to a bullet point. The panty pool. Have you ever seen those office pools What they do for football games? It's a grid of boxes with a zero to nine going and zero blah, 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 blah. You can do the same. But instead of putting names in the squares, you can put sex acts. So whoever wins really wins. And it's up to you to be as nice or as naughty as you won't. You can have the prizes be anything your little hearts desire from kissing to erotic massage to you owe him a BJ to he owes you a BJ You can bet on having sex in his tool shed. Yes! My tool shed is awful. Or a certain pair of panties you have to wear in the tool shed. Or bet he has to do that funny little dance he does naked. Achilles. Hey, 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 cool down, cool down, cool down. Hey, 
I said, hey. I said, cool it down. Relax. I said, relax. I'm not spying on you. <laughs> it was just a lucky guess. I guarantee that you will be more interested in the game if you have an e what if you guarantee that you will be more interested in the game if you have an evening with a blindfold, whipped cream, and oral sex riding on the line. And a he will watching as will he will doubly interested if he's got the same thing going for him if he wins. What? <laughs> Guys. The Super Bowl is boring. It is boring. And the only way to make it more interesting is if you could probably have sex with a drunk man after it's done. Hell yeah. I'm, exactly, USA. This is the greatest country on earth. This is the most attractive audience on earth. And I, Want to win? You vote for me. You vote for me. You vote for me. I will tune the Super Bowl into Super Six. You vote for me. You vote for me. That was Morton Downey. I mean, Adam Bozarth. Just, just, just tell the audience what you expect of them. That is the first rule of show business. Tell the audience what you expect of them. For the first time ever on the F Plus live stage, this is K Thor Jensen! <laughs> K Thor, my dear colleague from so long ago, K Thor, will you please push that button? I will not. I am very shy and timid and physically weak. That's so true. I would like to request a volunteer from the audience to assist me. Here we go. All right. What's your name? Hux. Hux. It's a pleasure to meet you. Do we have any history in the past? Uh, yes, kind of. I did art for uh, the 20, uh, 24 Terrible Hours in the live stream. I did art for that. I meant history with me personally. Uh, no. That's you. <laughs> Excellent. We'll begin. We're not sexually attracted to each other. We're on a level playing hey. field. Whoa. Hey. That's a bit much. Hey, I'm sexually attracted to everybody here. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah, Here's the deal. When you get up here, there's a thing they don't tell you, and that thing is this is incredibly thirsty work. You become very parched reading terrible things from the Internet. So here's what I need you to do, Hux. There's this box here. You'll see this box has seven eyedroppers in it. They each contain a different liquid. None of these liquids are marked. However, if you come around the front, you'll see they're arranged on a continuum. If you come around the front. Oh. <laughs> Listen. Listen. You see USA. 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 F R O N T. USA. All right. USA. They're arranged on along a continuum of pleasant to unpleasant. Here's the deal, Hux. When I become thirsty, I will ring this tiny bell. That is my signal to you to take one of these eyedroppers, gently, they are made of glass, I do not wish to bleed out on stage, and place it in my mouth and squeeze so that I may quench my thirst as I read. Are you capable of this task? Maybe. Let's find out. I can't deal with a maybe, it's a yes or no, Hux. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! All right! Yeah! All right. Now! Now I'm ready to push this motherfucking button. Push that motherfucking button. Again. Right. Oh. 
do we got? All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, Jensen, I'm born for this. It is time to tell girls how to have ice powers. You got the motherfucking ice powers. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> how to pretend to have ice powers for girls. Ice powers are a fictional superpower where the person who possesses them can control snow and ice. Fictional? By crafting an icy look, engaging in icy activities, and convincing others of your ice powers, you can pretend to have ice powers and impress your friends. Bullshit. Hit me, Hux! Hit me! That's motherfucking hot sauce! Method one! Crafting an icy appearance! All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. This is good. I'm glad you gave me the hot sauce because I'm reading about this. Oh, fuck it. Wear blue. Step one. Wear blue, gray, silver, and white clothes. To convince people of your ice powers, your look should bring winter to mind. Wear clothes in shades of blue, white, and silver for an icy appearance. Snowy patterns. You're fucking ready. Like Prince of Snowman and icicles are also good. For inspiration, look at movie characters who also have ice powers, such as Elsa, Jack Frost, and Frozone! He sucks! Get out of here! He sucks! And Mr. Get Freeze sucks! Fuck! Hey, you garbage! Yo, hey! Calm down, we're still working here! Two! Put streaks of blue and white in your hair! Give yourself an ice kiss look by putting real or faux winter colors in your hair! A temporary hair power that you can brush on your hair like eyeshadow, then wash out, such as hot hues! Is a good choice. Experiment with shades of blue, white, and silver for a cool look. Clip-in hair extensions are a great option, too. They come in. You ready for this? You ready for this shit? Yeah. Single weft packs! And will look like highlights! Let me hug. I can't wait for you to get God the damn, one that is fish sauce! <laughs> Not great! Not great! Oh, God. Three! We're in this time, right? We're, oh, hell! We got a long way to go. <laughs> I got a lot of eyedroppers in that. All right, okay. <clears throat> ah, so salty. Three, wear accessories with snowflake patterns yeah. to give yourself a snowy appearance. Opt for necklaces, bracelets, rings, or earrings with snowflake or icicle patterns. You can also choose scarves worn with metallic thread for a shimmery, icy exterior. God. If you can't find accessories in a snowy pattern because you're a fucking idiot, opt for silver tone jewelry. It has a cooler, more wintry look than gold. Wear jewelry with quartz crystals, which look like icicles. Four, experiment with wintry nail polish. Nail polish is a great way to get an icy look. You can find tutorials online for nail art designs of snowflakes or snowmen. Or you can simply opt for icy blue or silver polish like a lazy fucking ice power loser. The next dropper has uh, nail polish yeah. in it. Some nail polish even has glitter, which makes your hands look unusual. And magical! How do I get ice powers? I'm fucking, there's like 15 You don't, pages you're here. not a girl. And actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Logic and reason, thanks for that. For a neat look, lay a glitter polish over a flat colored nail polish because you've got all day. For example, you Thank you. For example, you could try silver glitter polish over flat blue polish. Whoa! Five, use shimmery white and blue eyeshadow. Seek out eyeshadow. God, this is all fucking makeup. Is that the most part? Are there all right, questions? Let's Method two, convincing others of your ice powers. Hit me, Hux. I'm convinced. Oh my god. Oh, that's, that's just yellow mustard like you put on a hot dog. <laughs> Shit. All right. One, talk about how the cold doesn't bother you. People with ice powers are impervious to feeling the pain normal people feel when touching ice or snow. Talk a lot about how snow and ice have no effect on you. Yeah. If people are bundling up from a cold day, you could say, I feel most at home in the snow, or the cold has never bothered me. I have the, you! I have the power Number of hypothermia! Dip your hands in cold water, then touch a friend. 
to make people think you have ice powers, run your hands under very cold water or dip your hands in a bowl of ice for no more than 20 seconds. Then dry your hands and touch a friend's bare skin. If they recoil or comment on how cold you are, act as if you don't notice. You could say, really? I guess my ice powers are strong today. I'm sorry. I need to object. This guy is on performance enhancing mustard. All right. Number three. Where are we at? Glance at your hands wistfully when people mention ice or snow. You know, I feel like they knew each other beforehand. I think they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know everyone here. All right. When people talk about ice or snow, glance at your hands as if they are the source. You can even sigh for effect to draw attention to what you're doing. If they comment on a snowy day, for example, you could say, sometimes I just don't know my own power. <laughs> Tell people more about upcoming winter weather patterns. Keep an eye on upcoming cold weather days. When people talk about the weather, imply that you may have a hand in upcoming wintry storms. You could say, I'm making it snow. I mean, it's supposed to snow on Tuesday. <laughs> Wait, right. what did you Good say? say? Good I'm bringing ice. I mean, there are going to be ice storms this weekend. All right. I'm not a fucking trained animal. I'm thirsty when I'm thirsty. <laughs> Method three, engaging in icy activities. Hit me. You want two? No, that's just one. That's actually the first batch of my homebrewed kombucha. Of my homebrewed kombucha, and it's delicious. Come on, hold it. All right. What? Shut up. Participating in winter sports. Engage in winter sports to become really in touch with ice and snow. You could try ice skating or skiing, or if you're less athletic, go sledding. If you <laughs> take that sledder, fucking sled kids, inner tube, sled kids. I'm an Olympic gold coming. medalist in sledding. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go to community Q and A because we're running out of time. Oh shit, you ready for this? Yeah. Here's a question. What if I'm black or a very dark Latino? <laughs> All right, you ready for this? What? <laughs> How do I look snow kissed? Community answer, this is good. This is open to everybody. You can look snow kissed regardless of skin tone or eye color. You can. Yes, yes. Who the fuck doesn't know that? You can still color your hair a little with blue. All right, well, there's so many questions. Shit. All right, whoa, all right, you ready? Adam, this one's for you, my friend. Question, I'm a boy. How can I pretend to have ice powers? Damn. Community answer. Use the exact same method. Just forget the makeup and dresses unless you want to wear makeup and a dress. Yeah. Then by all means, go ahead. Hawk, hit me, hit me. God damn it, that was the last one. Give me that. No, there's one more. Give me the last one. Yeah, there you go. That's my own piss. Good night. Performance enhancing piss. <laughs> you know, I would usually frown on forcing a punchline like that, but when the punchline is, that's my own piss, good night. I don't come to play. Yeah. 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 Also, for the first time on the F Plus Live stage, this. Is Shell Game! How you doing, Shell Game? The microphone's right there. Hello. <laughs> Shell Game, there is so much beauty on that board. Oh, there is. And in front of it, too, am I right? Oh. Yeah. Oh, stop. Shell Game, are you ready to push that button? Yes. That's good enough. Shell Game, please oh, push that button.
Shell game, the people of F Plus Live need to know how to escape a minefield. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. How to escape a minefield. Hey. Hi. Fields peppered with deadly mines in North Korea, Afghanistan, India, Vietnam, Iraq, and many other places are responsible for thousands of deaths every year. (laughs) Even mines decades old are, are as dangerous as when they were first laid, capable of exploding at the slightest pressure. Read on to find out how to safely escape a minefield and avoid entering one in the first place. Method one, scoping out the situation. Now, you should look for signs that mines are close. Most mines, now, most mines are hidden. Most mines are hidden. Most of them. Most of them. Like 60%. But, but, don't worry everybody. If you know what to look for, you'll have a better chance of avoiding them. Now, don't let your guard down. Even for a moment, those mines could jump out at you at any time. Is this mines or mimes? (laughs) Well, one you'll hear coming and one you won't. (laughs) Constantly be on the lookout for the following signs. Trip wires. These aren't usually clearly visible, so you've got to look very closely at the ground. Wires are usually thin enough to be almost impossible to see. Thank you for that demonstration. Uh, Signs of road repair. This includes paved areas, new fill, road patches, ditches, and so on. This could be a sign that mines were installed nearby. Every summer, every summer in your city when they start paving, keep an eye out. Signs or markers on tree stakes or posts. The forces that place mines may mark the minefields to protect their own soldiers. Learn the signs. Dead animals. (laughs) Uh, uh, Cattle. And other animals frequently detonate mines. They're kind of dumb, so, you know, they can't look for the signs. You can. Uh, well, well, you should look for some odd features in the ground or patterns that are not present in nature. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, plant growth may wilt or change color, and grain may wash away some cover, and the cover may sink or crack around the edges. Or the material covering the mine may look like mounds of dirt. You see any dirt on the ground? I don't. I think we're okay. The civilians staying away from certain places or out of certain buildings. That's your biggest tell. If the civilians aren't stepping on the mines, that's probably In where the they buildings. are. <laughs> you know, I think you have some ideas of how to spot the mine, but how do you get out safely? Well, here's method two, get out, getting out safely. Backtrack your way out of a mined area. Should you suspect that you have entered a minefield or mined area, either because you see warning signs, you see a mine, or potential mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Still in mine school. You have to, that's why you have to always be on guard. So... <laughs> or because a detonation occurs. That's the biggest Just sign. Just saying. That's a Re- surefire sign of a minefield. Remain mind field. calm and carefully back out of danger by stepping in your footsteps. If possible, do not turn around. You if don't know. Possible. Someone might have set mines. In, someone might have set mines in your footprints. You have to watch. Mine yeah. Yeah. Like the predator. <laughs> now, uh, try probing the ground. If you probe the ground, uh, if you have to move forward for, if you have to move forward for some reason, if you can't back up because someone put mines in your footprints, or you can't see the tracks to backtrack, you need to probe the ground for mines and move forward little by little. Probe the ground. I'm sorry. Are you the, the expert in minefields? 
Please listen to Shell Game. She's giving you a lot of yes. great information. Probe the ground very carefully with your hands or feet. What? <laughs> Just reach out and touch some mind. No. No, okay, absolutely not. We're out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, uh, once you've cleared a small area, move forward and continue probing. It's safest to move fo- move through the field very slowly on your belly rather than walking through. Yeah, lie on the ground and poke the mines with a stick. And if Is you it mess acceptable up, acceptable to do the worm. If you mess up, reload your last save of Fallout Four. <laughs> <laughs> now. Pay attention for signs that a detonation may occur. When exiting a minefield, be alert for signs that a mine may detonate. Listen for unusual noises like kaboom. <laughs> you may notice a faint click if a pressure plate has been depressed or a tilt rod has been moved, or more likely, you may hear a pop of the exploding cap. <laughs> Pay attention to. Yeah. <laughs> well, then what? You drop to the ground immediately if a detonation has been initiated. Soldiers call this hitting the deck. If you notice uh, any signs from the last step, or if someone nearby cries out a warning that they have detonated a mind, <laughs> you're not gonna believe to what ground. I just fucking did. Hey, watch drop out, to the guys! As quickly as possible. You may have as little as a second before. <laughs> before the mine explodes, but if you use that second wisely, you may be able to escape serious injury or death. Questions! Yeah, read this article in one second. It, is it possible to see a tripwire if they have dew drops on them? <laughs> Community answer! Tripwires are designed to be camouflaged by color. So if you're in a grassy area, the comma wire is green. If you're in the desert, the tripwires are tan. You may be able to see dew drops on the trip wires if the sun hits them and makes them shine. Also, if the mine has a pressure release detonator, it has to be pulled tight, and you may be able to see them. Hey, so what breed of dogs do they use to sniff out the landmines in minefields? <laughs> well, Kenny has a great answer here. What? Most dogs have a great sense of smell and can be trained to become mine detecting dogs. Mine detecting is a skill developed over time for dogs not one that occurs naturally in specific breeds. <sighs> Remember that minds do not work like in the movies. You won't hear a click. You won't see any trip wires. Dogs can't you won't hear save a click. You, you hear now. a pop. It's a pop. What's a pop so different? There's a mind underneath you all. <laughs> Holy shit. What a fucking heat. There's a lot of things in my hands. All right. You vote for me. It is time for us... You vote for me. ...to (laughs) open up... But Adam, is there one thing you would like with your Richard Nixon pose? You vote for me. (laughs) You vote for me. You vote for me. Motherfucking best. It is time for you to pick it. You vote for me. You vote for me. He knows where you live. Oh, they vote for you. You vote for me. Or I kill you. You vote for me. You vote for me. You vote for me. Or I kill you. Yeah, you could listen to that and you could die. You vote for me or I kill you. I said you vote for me or I'll kill you. Kathar, did you bring any more piss? I brought a lot more piss, but I'm carrying it. You vote for me, and I'll drink my piss later. Or I'll kill you. You vote for me. Vote for Shell. She doesn't drink weird shit like that. I don't love Joey Salas. He stole my bit. I think this is somewhat insurmountable, but there could be a sea change. There could be a change in mind. Oh, look at that. You vote for me. Oh, my God. Impressive. You vote for me. I'm from Hollywood. 
You vote for me! You vote for me! With a plurality! With an undeniable, incontrovertible plurality of the votes, your winner is Shell Game! Now you know how it feels, Adam.